What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode, we are going to be going over something that we haven't done before, but I mention it all the time, and that is rollback netcode. So, there's one thing I want to talk about that's universally about rollback netcode. Before we start talking about it in the series and implementing it in the series, I want to show you some of the options you have, as well as some plugins that already exist, to make our lives a little bit easier. We can choose to use them or not, that depends on what we want to do with our game, what version we're on in Unreal Engine, and a few other things. Now, some of you may have heard me talk about rollback, and some of you may have not. So rollback is essentially, in the simplest terms I can think of, it is basically a system which is meant to keep latency as low as possible or appearing as low as possible for each player in a game. This is useful because it makes the game feel as reliable as possible so it makes the game feel like when you input an action you're performing that action and when the enemy or the opponent puts in an input you are seeing that input pretty much in real time it doesn't actually change when the data is passed through the network because that's not really possible that depends on the connections but it does change some of the things in the game some states and animations to make everything appear as though it is as quick as you are seeing it. It's happening real time for you. And so rollback netcode is very, very important in fighting games these days. It is my most requested topic to speak about out of any of my series, any of my videos. And while we have started to work on the online episodes in my fighting game tutorial series, we have not gotten into rollback just yet. So for those of you that have been following my different series, including the fighting game, you're going to want to check this out because this will help you understand some of the methods that we may use for the fighting game rollback. And for those of you that haven't watched my series and you're just interested in this plugin specifically, then that will still work. I'm not going to do anything that is specific to my series today in this episode. I'm just going to show you how to set up this plugin in your game and start working with GGPO or rollback netcode in Unreal Engine 4. All right, with that introduction out of the way, let's talk about what this plugin really is. So Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 don't support rollback by default. And this is because for rollback to work, the engine has to be deterministic and Unreal is not. However, it is possible to implement rollback in Unreal Engine, but it requires quite a bit of changes. Now, there are people who've gone out and implemented these changes, such as BWD Yeti. And there is specifically the one that we're going to be looking at today. I reached out to BWD Yeti to get confirmation about making a tutorial on this and using this for the tutorial series. So thank you for being kind and for allowing us to use this. And props go to them for creating this actual plugin. Now this is specifically for Unreal Engine 4, and the reason I'm using this one is because this one is tried and true, it has been tested, and there's a lot of evidence that this will work and is functional, and with something as complicated as this, I want to make sure everything is right when I'm relaying that information to you. So this is specifically for Unreal Engine 4. If you've never used this before, this is just github.com, so this is just a Git repository that this person has and has shared with us. I will provide the link in the description, but here's the link if you want to type it in manually. Again, shout out to BWD Yeti for this wonderful repository that you have. You can go to the forks section here once you get to this page and look at other forks that exist, and some people have started to implement this in UE5. I have not tested them, I have not tried them out, but I will in the future so that we can upgrade to UE5 if we do use this plugin. For now, I'm going to be focusing on the UE4 one, but don't worry, UE5 one will be coming once it is fully tested, and I am sure that we can use it. Now, going back here, so one other thing we need to talk about before I start showing you how to set this up is what GGPO is. So GGPO, for those that don't know, there's the link right here, is a rollback networking SDK or software development kit. So this is basically a type of rollback netcode. I'm not going to go over the whole thing now. You can read about it on your own if you want. But it is meant to make incorporating rollback networking into new and existing games as easy as possible. And so GGPO is a very common method of implementing rollback. It's not required that you use it, but it will make our lives easier, specifically within Unreal Engine, because we don't have to reinvent everything that that already did. 
So this itself actually comes from the GGPO repository here. This is the official GGPO one. So if you'd like, you could even start from this repository, this plugin, instead of the GGPO for UE4. But I would recommend for my series, and if you're using Unreal Engine 4, to use one of the branch ones, but that is all up to you. Now, getting started on actually implementing this. So if we want to incorporate this into our project, we are going to need to download this and follow the instructions that it has. The instructions are actually very, very simple. But there could be a roadblock or two that we run into while doing it, depending on our version of Unreal and a few other things. The first thing I recommend doing is just scrolling down and reading this very quickly. It's very short. And this has all the information you need. It tells you where to add it, which is just to the plugins folder. And there's also a readme with some great, great information on rollback netcode. This explains it in depth, and I learned a lot from this because when I was first using this plugin, I did not understand how rollback netcode worked, and I learned a ton with this. On top of it, I have been able to take what I learned here and even begin implementing my own method of rollback netcode that I haven't shared yet using this document. So this document is very well written, and it makes a ton of sense after you read this. It really, really helps you out. So I recommend reading this if you want to learn more about rollback. And there's also a sample application that you can see rollback netcode working in Unreal Engine 4. And it's this Vector War UE4 project right here. Also, note that it is currently only usable with Windows as the GGPO source and network layer depend on Win32 APIs. Now, don't worry, this doesn't mean that you can't accomplish rollback, but it does mean that you can't use GGPO at the current state. There are forks that people have implemented to get GGPO working on different operating systems, but I don't know too much about that as I have not explored there and I'm not gonna talk about it today, but it could be something we explore later in the future if you guys are interested. Now, once you're ready to import this into your project, what you're gonna to need to do is either clone this repository from GitHub, if you're familiar with that, or just download the plugin itself. For this case, I'm just going to download the plugin itself because it's quite simple to do. And it's very quick because this is a very small plugin. So you hit the code button that I've pressed here, the local tab, you have your different options, and I just download zip. Once you press this, it's automatically going to start downloading it. And I've already downloaded it, so ignore a few of the things I have in here. The important thing is, when you download this, you're going to get ggpo ue4-master.zip. This is your actual version of these files. They're just zipped up. So now you can right click on it and hit extract here or whatever option you usually use to unzip files. And when you do that, you'll get this, which is the open folder, the unzip folder. Now you can go in here and check it out. It's going to be the same as what you're seeing here on my screen. You see we have the doc folder, resources, source, and then we have the git ignore, the plugin, the license, and the readme. Basically, when you download this from Git, you're just downloading that folder structure. Now, the readme in here is the same, but you can open this up, and all you have to do to set up and use this is add it to the plugins folder of your Unreal project. Again, that should hopefully work for you right away. For me, it did not. And I will show you what you need to change and how to fix it. So take this folder and put it into your project. So I just copy the whole thing. You can control C or right click and copy. Then you go to the folder you want. I have a few different versions of the fighting game. This one I had not implemented it in yet. So I went ahead and copied it into the plugins folder right here. You'll automatically have this folder in your Unreal project, even if you don't have any plugins currently. And then when you go in here, just paste it. So control V or right click and paste. Then you'll have what I have here. And at this point, you don't really have to change anything in here until you test it. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up this project. And specifically, you need to open up the code. So open up the name of the project.sln or the solution file. Now, once you do that, you'll get what I have here. This is my solution. And it doesn't matter what any of this stuff is. This comes from my fighter template, but you could have entirely different stuff. The important thing is that you can build it. So try and build the solution. Once you have that plugin in there, it will build those files. Now, 
If it succeeds, great, you're good to go already. It's literally that simple and that's how it's supposed to be. However, take note that there are different versions of Unreal and with different versions, things change. So there are errors that you may get. And if you get these errors, I'm gonna hopefully show you how to fix them all. I tested this with a few versions and I have come up with solutions for every single one of the errors. So I'm hoping that any errors you get, I am able to help you fix. But if you do end up running into another error that I don't catch, feel free to message me or comment on this video and I will gladly help you. These are the errors that I got on my version currently, which is 4.27.2. So if I go ahead and build my solution, it succeeded last time because I had those fixes already in there, but this is what it looked like for me as soon as I added the GGPO UB4 to the plugins folder for the first time. I'm building my solution. You're gonna notice this output log is going to fill with a bunch of errors and then I won't be able to build, the build will actually fail. All right, you see that the build has completed here, but it has failed. If I go to my error list, it's not gonna be super helpful here because the errors are in the plugin, but the output log here is gonna be very useful. So we can scroll up to the top. And by the top, I basically just mean wherever we get our first error. So you can see no errors here, just skim the log. And you can see the first error is here in ggpo.net.h. And the error you get is that the function is not a member of STD. STD is a namespace, and basically it's saying you can't use STD colon colon function in this file. You can double click on this error, and it will bring you exactly to where the error is coming from. And you can see STD colon colon function, it's saying this doesn't exist. And this actually has a really, really simple solution. Always start at the top when you are fixing errors because they trickle down. So one error can cause other errors. The top error is the first error that occurred. So without even really looking at the others, we are going to just go and fix this error. And all it takes is for in this file, ggpo.net.h, to include a certain line. Now to get to this file, if for whatever reason it won't open when you're double clicking on the error, you can go to your file structure, go to your plugins, go to your plugin, and then go to the source, ggpo ue4, go to public, include ggpo net.h. You can open it from here. Then when you come in here, I had to add this include, which is include functional. And when I did that, everything worked for me on 4.27.2. You'll see that I am able to build after doing this. Now, this was included on my other versions. However, when I had built on 4.24.2, I had gotten some other errors that I'm going to show you how to fix right now. Now, I am on version 4.27.2. I don't have 4.24.2 on my machine anymore. But what I'm going to show you is how to fix the error that I got on that version. And what we need to do is go into the GGPO game instance file. And to do this, you can go back to your file structure, go back to the public folder, go back one folder to GGPO UE4, go to private, and we want to go to GGPO game instance.cpp. And we want to open that up. I actually opened it up in the wrong Visual Studio. I mean, technically it will work if I change it here, but that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to close this and I'm gonna make sure I open it with the same version of Visual Studio that I'm using now, so it opens in this file. All right, and in this file, it's very small, but what I had to do when I was in 4.24.2, and what you may have to do is change this line, line 11 here. And that is because this create network takes in some parameters, and this f name, f string text was actually causing an error. It did not want this to be an f string. So take this out, text the f name and you'll have to take out a parenthesis as well so that you have the right number but once you do this it will build now if you do this anyway it will still build it's not going to hurt anything if you do this in a newer version at least it never has in my case but you don't have to do this and i would recommend leaving it alone if you don't need that but that's one thing that was giving me an error and then the other thing that was giving me an error in 4.24.2 was honestly pretty much the same thing, but it was in a different file. It was in my GGPO 
net.cpp. So now if I go back to my folder structure again, and I'm going to go back to this folder and go into public and go to include and open up ggpo.net.cpp, which I already have it open, but again, I just open it with the same version of Visual Studio. I'll come here. Then I scroll down to line 93, which had basically the same issue as before. So we were using F name and then F string colon colon print F and then putting in a text, but we really don't have to do this. The text field can go directly into the F name field here and work. We don't need to use this F string. In fact, it's causing errors on the older versions. So what I actually did was just take away the print F, leave the F name in here and just take this out. Of course, you can take away your parentheses as well because you don't need that many extra parentheses. And now if you build, you actually shouldn't get an error for this, but you won't be done just yet. We have another one in this file. And that is right here at line 109. You're going to want to do the same thing for So we're going to take away our F string print F in this file and take away your extra parenthesis. And then if you save and build, it should work. Again, this will also work in newer versions, but it doesn't throw errors in the newer versions to leave it like this because this is acceptable code in the newer versions. So I would recommend leaving them alone and not doing this unless you're getting extra errors. Now, these are all the errors that I ran into from 4.24.2, 4.25, 4.26, and 4.27. I did try it on all of those, but you could run into others. Again, let me know if you do. With all that done, you have the ability to edit this project and to run this project with your UE4 GGPO plugin installed. So you can begin playing around with it and utilizing it. I do recommend looking over the documentation, as I mentioned before. And I do recommend also running the vector board game that is provided because that is very useful to show you it actually working in Unreal Engine. And this is the start to being able to use this plugin in your game. It could be any game, it doesn't have to be a fighting game, but fighting game is typically where you see this because it benefits us as developers the most in that scenario. Now it's not entirely sure to me yet if we're gonna use this method or if we're gonna use our own. I'm still working through all that, but this is a method that you guys can absolutely use. So feel free to get a head start on it if you'd like. Otherwise guys, that's all I got for you. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and consider donating to the Patreon or YouTube membership if you'd like to support me and see more of this type of video. There's a link in the description for the Discord if you need any assistance with following this tutorial or setting up GGPO for UE4 in your project. And like I said, that's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.